Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But Rabbi Patrick, uh, amen. Are you here? Are you still here? Don't yes, John, I'm still here. Let me try. I was kind of jogging between the clinic and this place. So let me okay. um, just turn on my camera no here. Um, Dr. Patrick's at work. He is a medical doctor and he's. Yeah, let me turn on the camera. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a powerful um, message tonight. The prophetic, uh, so powerful tonight. And uh, I mean, what can you add to this? Me and John, we spoke about two days ago. And I was just giving a hint about what a year is, is going to be like for us. And I was mentioning, you know, what Professor John already mentioned, uh, the year 574, talking about the 80 and then the 4, which you already talked about. And uh, we're seeing that God is opening the doors for us. I mean, the doors are opened wide for opportunities uh, from um, transition in our life. Many, many people will be making a lot of transitions in your life and the doors are open wide. And, and we, we saw that in the cosmic and then the Lord is just, just confirming this. And one of the things that um, the Lord was also speaking to us was that it must be a year where we need to attend our own uh, spiritual funerals and crucify the flesh mm. because um, a lot of the doors will be open, but if we are not walking in step with spirit, we'll miss the doors that are open. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be very important that we actually crucify our flesh. You cannot cast out the flesh. Demons are cast out. The flesh must be crucified. Mm. And that's the Lord was speaking to that because when the doors are open and we don't crucify the flesh, will miss it. And that ties into with uh, the story of Joseph hmm. in the Bible, the story of Joseph. And Joseph, as we know, that he lived in the house of Potiphar. And um, it seems as though a door was opened in Potiphar's wife. Hmm. But if he had gone through that door, that was not a right door for him. Um, I'm sure he would have been blackmailed and he would have been, mm -hmm. um, you know, constantly had to um, uh, satisfy what is his wife. And so guess what? He crucified the flesh and he did not succumb to the flesh. Mm -hmm. And so we know where Joseph ended up in, into jail. And, and even in jail, we see doors were open for Joseph all the time. I mean, when people were whining and complaining, we see doors open for Joseph serving the people in jail. And so it's very important that um, as the Lord, you know, give us a lot of doors, we should be able to also discern uh, which doors we should not go through. And that is why it's so important that uh, crucifying the flesh is so important so we can walk in step with spirit so we know which doors we should go through. And also it's going to be a lot of uh, ministry opportunities are going to be wide open. There's going to be doors of ministering um, to people, sharing the love of God, just breathing life into people. Um, it is very important your family members, your co-workers, and uh, the Lord is uh, wanting us to step out boldly. Do not hold back. Be very bold uh, to go through the door because some of the doors that um, will be opened, um, there will be opposition, uh, but as Paul said, there was a great opportunity mm. was open to me but there was a lot of opposition, but we was able to go through that and just go right through the opposition and just go through the door that the Lord has opened for us. So um, there's going to be a lot of demonstration of the power of God in us. And I see a lot of ministry opportunities going. 
And, and the Lord is want us to know that uh, we should not look back. So anyone who has set his hand to the plow mm -hmm. should not go back. The Lord will demand a lot of commitment in our, in our, in our part. And this year, we must be committed to our spiritual life more than ever before. Um, don't look back. Um, another translation says that if you... Uh, um, if you if you look, uh, I'm forgetting what's in the message uh, Bible talks about. Um, if you start doing something for God and then you kind of look back and you don't finish it, if you procrastinate and yeah, that's the exact way. If you procrastinate it, um, you said you you are no good, you know. <laughs> so so basically, there'll be a lot of uh, ministry opportunities, and um, I would want us to that as far as God is going to bless businesses and your career path and families and stuff like that. I just want us to become more kingdom minded this uh, particular year. A lot of kingdom mindedness, um, so that those doors will be uh, they'll be open, but we should be able to go through those doors to ex expand the kingdom of God. All right, because. We've been eating a lot here, right? Spiritual food, we're eating a lot from here. And uh, when we eat so much, you know, it's kind of a little arrested in our belly, right? And we need to gush it out. We need to let it go. See, that's what Yeshua said, that out of your bellies will mm. flow the rivers of river waters. And so that is the power of God, the love of God, the compassion of God. All of us are in us. So a lot of doors, I'm just going to focus on the, the kingdom doors that are going to be open because the material things are going to come because, you know, Yeshua says, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these, right, shall be added. So uh, this, the kingdom doors that's going to be open, I just want us to uh, focus on that to be able to um, be a channel of blessing to what is happening in this world now. The world is hungry. They are thirsty for love. They're thirsty for the light of God in us. And we, they're thirsty for the life of God in us, right? And we have life. And sometimes when you are going to go to certain doors, just you going through the place and being there, being there, just being there, the life of God would dissipate every death. Mm -hmm. You can be in the hospitals, in a family a members' home who are sick, just you being there because we are full of life. Because why? Because the word is in us and the word became flesh, right? And dwelt amongst men. So this word has actually is in us. And as we allow ourselves to be and go through the open doors that God has given us, we are going to see the miraculous happen. We are going to see darkness just dissipate just by present because the light will consume the mm. death. The Bible says the light shine it and the darkness did not comprehend it, right? Mm. So uh, I just want us to take this opportunity to become more uh, kingdom-minded this year. And another thing that the Lord was speaking also when we uh, I look at the year, what God was saying was that, so behold, I've, I've given you an open door, right? Revelation chapter three, verse eight. So behold, there's an open door that he has given us. And one of the things that we are going to do is that we're going to have some Josephs to build some storehouses mm. for money uh, to finance the kingdom thing. All right. So there's going to, the, the Lord is ready because as we see, Joseph had a lot of open doors to him and the Lord used Joseph when he had open doors. He used him to build storehouses, right? And he fed the people and he cons uh, he was able to um, uh, 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 conserve people that they, they would not lose or they would not die. They would not uh, uh, die of hunger. And so the Lord will be raising a lot of us because a lot of the uh, the financial opportunities that God has given us, um, yes, we're going to spend some on ourselves, but the mainly is going to be for kingdom thing because as we sow more into the kingdom, guess what? You are not going to lack because those blessings will chase you down. Yeah. Believe me, they will chase you down. They will. That's what that's the scripture says. And so that they so say, what? I am giving you the power to get well so that I can establish my covenant with you. And mm -hmm. the covenant is for the kingdom business. So I just want us to not look on only to the financial aspect, our own, you know, my family, me, me, go beyond me and just begin to see the doors are open for the kingdom. And as we expand the kingdom, as we become more committed to 
kingdom stuff, more doors are going to be open to us. More doors are going to be open to us. And, and so uh, this year, 5784, just see it. I mean, your business are going to flourish. Your, your kids are going to be do well. Your, everything's going to well. Why? Because we are planted by the rivers of, of, of the almighty God, right? And uh, our roots are so deep into the, into the soil. And so we are going to flourish. The Bible says that the, that the righteous shall flourish out the palm, right? So we are going to flourish, but I want us to not forget the kingdom because that is what the Lord was speaking to me this year, that the kingdom opportunities are going to be wide open. You know, wherever you go, when someone may sit, don't be afraid, lay hands, they'll be healed because it's, it's the Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. It's not a Christ out there, the one in you. And he is a talking Christ, a walking Christ, yeah. abiding yeah. Christ is in you. So wherever you go, you are a walking, talking, abiding Christ, right? right? So just manifest the cry because that's who you are. So the doors that are going to be open to us is mostly, I mean, a lot of things are going to happen in material planes, but mostly to manifest the Christ in us wherever mm -hmm. we go. And, and that's what I want us to just focus on. I'm not going to take to go, to go on and on, but is the kingdom, be kingdom minded, because as we don't know, if you are if you are mindful only about little church kind of stuff, you've missed the whole point. It's kingdom. Yeshua came to build the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so as we focus on the kingdom of God and we will prioritize that the kingdom of God, the kingdom things become the first thing in our lives. Believe me, all other things will come to you. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Lamborghini? What? Whatever. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Three story house. I don't know what you want, what you desire. But the Bible says that whatsoever you desire, right? Whatsoever you desire, he bring to you, give to you. I say, delight yourself in the Lord, and He will what give you the desires of your heart. So when we desire ourselves in the Lord, mindful of his kingdom, as the doors are open, brothers and sisters, mystics, uh, you'll be blown away. You will not lack anything. The Bible that the, he that believes in God, he that loves the Lord, has the fear of the Lord, shall not lack any good thing. All right. Mm -hmm. So you are not going to lack any good thing, but I want to apply ourselves more to the kingdom, support the kingdom business. If you can go build, be a Joseph, build a storehouse and just finance the kingdom because we want to take over America. Uh, I don't care. I was telling some people that everywhere we go, let's get the light of God is going to be there because as we become so aggressive, become minded of the kingdom doors that are going to be open to us, um, all our financial stuff will be taken care of. Your health will be taken care of because we seek the kingdom, all other things are going to be added to us. And another thing that we should also be mindful um, is that um, as the Lord opened the doors for us, this is the year to let go of the little earthly things like unforgiveness and all those kind of things. Let them go. Um, you don't have time for that because there's the, the vision is so big. The doors are going to be many, many doors are going to be open. So let go about all this kind of unforgiveness and also let the spirit of excellency rule in you this year because as the doors are open for businesses, make sure that you are doing everything. The spirit of excellency that's on Joseph, you know, it's on you. Do ministry excellently. If you are given, give excellently. If you were, whatever you are doing, go through that door with the spirit of excellency. And as we begin operating that sphere, um, there is no limit to what, you know, the Lord has already given us. The, the scripture says in uh, Ephesians 1.3 that his divine power has given unto us everything, right? Pertains unto life and godliness. So God has given us everything already. And I just want us to begin to walk through the door and just possess them. You know, like Prophet John was saying, uh, saying that, you know, the enemy will not come through that door. He will not come through our dwelling. He will not come. And Psalm 91 says that the arrows that fly by night, right, they will not come near your dwelling. They will not. They will not. Because you have made him your habitation, right? Because you've made him our habitation, those will not come through the doors that are going to open for us. And no devil, no demon will attempt because, you know, the angels of the Lord and comes around the dwelling of the righteous. And so I just want to encourage us that we should be more kingdom minded uh, this year, uh, more than before. Uh, finance kingdom. And if you can go, give. If you can go, go. 
be the Christ to all people. Um, manifest the power of God already inside of you. Um, and just 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 be the Christ in you. And you'll be surprised what um, the year is going to hold for you. Um, I'm not going to go into the... Uh, um, all the uh, material John already did. And so I wouldn't go there. The other thing that I want to point out was the 120 angle that was talking about end of flesh, the 120 mm -hmm. um, degrees. And also remember that the uh, erythrocytes in our uh, in our blood, right, mm -hmm. has 120 days span to, you know, that's how the, mm -hmm. the erythrocyte, the red blood cells, right, the only 120 days for them to live and die, right? And that's physically. So guess what is gonna happen here? It's talking about immortality, yeah, immortality here. Mm. So physically they're supposed to die 120 days, the red blood cells, right? And when the red blood cells die, guess what? You become anemic and what? You 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 you, you extinct. But guess what the Lord is doing? <laughs> so the the 20, 120 uh, degrees that the Lord is showing, um, the Lord says that what in, in Genesis talk about uh, all flesh will extend 120 years. But as Yeshua came, mm -hmm. guess what he did? Yeshua abolished that. Yeshua abolished that. So the blood of Yeshua does not have that 120 uh, days of erythrocyte, but it lives on forever. And that is where immortality comes into place, that we are not subjected to the decay of this physical world, but we are subjected to the immortal, to live healthy, to walk in health, to you know live a very uh, fruitful life. So um, just remember that, that Yeshua came to abolish the death Death of the uh, the flesh, and now we can actually live and uh, be immortal and walk mm -hmm. in perfect health. Doesn't matter what your genetics says, but I have a good news for you. You only have one genetic, the genetic of Yeshua. That's all you have. And that is why there is no um, generational curses are no longer applicable. So all those books that they are selling, throw them away. There is no generational curses. Why? Because we only have one generation, the generation of Yeshua. And that's whose line we come from. And so, yeah, as we go through the door this year, I'm expecting a lot of stuff that Lord should do through you mystics here in your own well, wherever the Lord places you. Uh, because he that is in you is greater than anything else out there. So go out there, conquer territories, go out there, businessmen, get your business flourish because God is with you. If your health is suffering, this is the end of it tonight i speak life into every cell of your being right now in jesus name i speak life bring life to you life the life of yeshua comes to you right now in the name of yeshua you know we went to africa uh, this year uh, in july my mom my brother called me from uh, from ghana and said your mom is dying if you don't come you may not meet your mom alive because your mom is dying she has strokes and so yeah you gotta come so i had to um, you know, buy a ticket and fly there. And so I come, we we, we, we arrived there and um, I, I went to the, the the village where my mom is and she could not recognize me. Mom couldn't recognize me. She looked at me, very just staring at me. She couldn't recognize me. And um, and my, my sisters were there and they said, this is Moses, this is Moses. She was just staring at me. She had cognitive, everything was gone. And so I, so we, I spent about three, four hours. She couldn't recognize me. I went to my wife. And so before they put her to bed, she can walk. Her right side is completely polarized. You know, uh, polarized. Uh, uh, she can raise the right hand. She can speak nothing. And so I said, so they took her to the room, um, you know, put her in a wheelchair to the room. And so the family members, all five children, just, you know, gathered around the bedside. And we started to begin to pray. And I lay hands on my on her head. I was standing at the head part of the bed. And I lay hands on her. And I said, life into you right now. In Jesus' name. So we speak life into you. Mom, life into every cell. In Jesus' name. And so we pray like four or five minutes. And we left. And next morning, we come in. Uh, she is in the living room and I come and I sit down and she raised her right hand and embraces me mm. and and she began to speak. The speech was not very clear at first. And then she, uh, the, my sister asked her, who is this? She said, this is Moses. 
And as the day progressed, as the, every day mom began to speak, her speech was clear, the arms was working. And I mean, she, she wasn't walking yet, but arms working, the, mm. the, the paralysis was gone. Yeah. And after today, when I called her two weeks ago, she was singing and she, I mean, that's what the Lord spoke to me, that when you speak life, yes. you, the life goes in and consume everything that is there in people's life. So let's begin to speak life. That is what the year 80 the pay right speak yes. life speak life speak life speak life and so it's so important that we learn to speak and that's what god told joshua he said this book of the law shall not depart from your pay. exactly from your pay and it said for and, and he said you shall meditate in day and night and you will make your way prosperous. Not God. You That's will right. make your way prosperous. So begin to speak life to situations. Speak to the things and the things that be, speak to them. So the things that be not as though they were, mm -hmm. they will come back to you. So I just want to leave uh, uh, with the last uh, phrase that we take this serious and speak to you over your children, speak over your businesses, speak over your lives, speak over everything that you have, speak over them, speak and speak. Yeshua said that if you shall say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the ocean and you will not doubt in your heart, it shall be to you what you said, not what you pray, what you say, all right, is different. So not praying, but what you say. So Pay is so important that we take this decade and begin to speak. And 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 I we saw mom and I and I told my sister that she's gonna walk because life has already entered her and the life will have to accomplish its own purpose. So doors are open, get a kingdom minded, speak to every situation. Don't care. If you go to the doctor's office, let me give you a let me give you a thing. I'm a doctor, right? If you go to the doctor's office, they give you the reports. All right. Be bold and be aggressive. Say, doctor, thank you for the report. I have a different report. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm here. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you begin to say that, the doctors will look at you like this. They're crazy. Yes, we are crazy. And if you become bold with your health, the Bible says from the time of the John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violent and the violent take it by force. So take things by force. The doors will be open to you. Some doors you got to go through by force. So I want to encourage you to be more aggressive in the, in the things of God. Be aggressive. Don't be passive. And so it will come to me. No, it won't come to you. Go for it. Go after it. Is this your business? Go after it. Your child wayward? Go after it. Is this your finances? Go after your health? Go after it. Take it by force. That is what pay is about. Speaking the word of God. Speaking mm. the word of God. And not doubting. Even if you don't see results right now, you release the life of God. The Bible said the word that it goes out of your mouth will not come back void until it accomplish the purpose for which it was sent for. Mm -hmm. So if you send the word for healing, don't don't waver. Don't doubt. It's going to happen because the word is life. Jesus, Yeshua said that the word that I speak to you, they are life and truth. And so the, uh, the year 5784 is the, is the year of speaking life, the year of pay, the year of becoming kingdom minded, and it's the year of attending your own spiritual funeral, crucify the flesh, and just go on and you will be surprised by the end of the year. You look back and it's so, God, I can't believe what you've done. And just because the word is creative and it will create the things that is not there, speak the word. It's going to create it for you in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we thank you tonight for your word that has come forth, Lord, that has been confirmed in the cosmics. God is confirmed even in the in the elements of the earth. It's been confirmed everywhere, Lord. And we thank you in the in the mouth of two or three mm -hmm. witnesses. It's a matter established, Lord. We thank you that this has been established, oh God, and forever, oh Lord, your word is settled. Mm -hmm. And God, and we take this word and we are running with this word. We are becoming more kingdom minded this, this year, Lord, so that we can see your kingdom come. Come, God. We'll see your kingdom everywhere, everywhere we are, in Africa, in Antarctica, in Australia, in America, wherever we are, Lord, we see your kingdom of God manifesting everywhere because we kingdom people are no longer going to sit on the fence. We are going out. We're going to allow the rivers out of our belly to gush out, to flow, God, just like the four rivers in the Garden of Eden is coming out of us, God, to flow into every area 
of our life, every area of our influences. And God, this water will bring life, life, life to areas where there is deadness. It will bring life because the river brings life. But I thank you for your people that will be energized and love that we will, we will be people who take the kingdom by violent and do not settle for any mediocrity, but we will arise and shine for our light has come, oh God. And thank you, Father, for your people. They are rising. Your people are, are prosperous. Your people will go as prosperous in every area of our life this year. And we give you praise and we give you glory. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done tonight. Tonight is not just a class, but tonight is an empowering session yes. to be able to launch into this year. The Lord has empowered us tonight. He's given us, he has equipped us tonight to go out there and be light, be salt, oh. and just do exploit. For they that know they are God shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. So the Lord has empowered you tonight. Go out there. You are strong in him. Go do some exploits for the Lord. And for the Lord is with us. And we will enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. And Father, we thank you for the man of God, Prophet John. Lord, we thank you for all the things that you've spoken through him tonight to us. And using him, oh God, to empower us for your kingdom. But I pray that you continue to protect him and his family, his kids, oh God. The Lord, everything that concerns him will be perfected, Lord. You said, I'll perfect that which concerns you. And so everything that concerns him will be perfected in the name of Yeshua. And we thank you, Lord, and we call it done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, okay. So somebody was having a legal case, a legal case, a legal case um, that um, the Lord is working you through it. The Lord is actually with you and um, you you would you would come out you come out you come out of it um, the Lord say you come out of it um, not ashamed but you come out of it successful okay successful and the legal case you come out of it uh, successful I see the number 20 I don't know what that means about the legal case but I see the number 20 um, um, that's in the, that legal case I see the number 20. I don't know what it actually means, but the Lord is saying that you're going to come out of that legal case and it's going to be very successful. And I see the number 20. So mm -hmm. glory to God. I don't know who this uh, concerns, um, apart from, you know. Uh, I'll receive yeah. it. I'll receive yeah, so it. I see the number 20. And so, yes, you're going to come out of it, um, yeah, out of that uh, legal case. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am going through Praise it. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Yes, Lord. It's done. It's done. Thank you, Lord. I am the door. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Just go ahead, Patrick, if you get something. Yes. Um, is anybody on the platform here who is sick here? Anybody sick here? Sick? You have a sickness and that you've not been prayed for or been prayed for before, but I just feel this, the, I feel that unction to just release the life of God into you right now. If anybody here been sick, and um, you're sick, even if it's chronic illness, uh, if you're here on this platform, I want to minister to you right now, um, that the life of God right now will come and consume that that is negative in your body right now. If send anybody on the platform, if you have a sick hands here, up and want you to just raise your here. Okay, in Jesus' name, Lady Rose, in the mighty name of Yeshua, we speak life to your body right now. Speak life, life of God, the life of God. Release the life of God to you right now in the name of Yeshua. That the life of God will consume anything that is deadly in your body. And Lord, we will release the life of God in the name of Yeshua, the name that is above every name. I command every sickness to go and you be healed right now. In the name of Yeshua. And Father, I release the life of God into her right now in the name of Yeshua. And we thank you and we call it done in Jesus' name. And you, what do you want to go home? You're going to do the thing that you couldn't do before. Just begin to do that because the life of God has just flowed into you. So begin to do the things that you couldn't do before in the name of Yeshua. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory Jesus to God. God. Hallelujah. Is any somebody on this platform that you were disappointed? You were running a business. You, you thought that the business was going to go a certain way, and it didn't turn out to be the way you wanted it. That was probably last year, 
and you felt disappointed. And the Lord is here to tell you that uh, it was his doing. So it wasn't the time it wasn't right for you, but the time is coming. So the time is coming. And when the time comes, it's going to be, I see the word quantum leap. It's going to be a quantum leap for you, for that business that you were actually expecting a big, a huge explosion last year or the last two years or so, but you haven't seen it. But I see a quantum, I see the word a quantum leap for your business. And the Lord said, did not be disappointed. He said, I was in it. So the timing wasn't right, but the time is coming where you're going to see a quantum leap of that business. So is there anyone in platform that resonates with that? Yeah, so, that is that. Gina. I don't know if you can see her. She, she also wanted prayer for physical healing. Okay. All right. Gina. Okay. Gina. All right. Okay. So in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, I speak hell. I speak health to your body right now. I speak life. I release the life of God into you right now. The life of God goes into right your being right now from the your crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I release that. I release that in Jesus' name. Actually, I release life now, energy into your thyroid glands right now. In the name of Yeshua, I release the life of God into your thyroid glands right now in the name of Yeshua and into your female area. In fact, your endocrine system, I see your endocrine system right now. And I release life into the endocrine system right now to correct anything that is from the hypothalamus to the pituitary, the axis. I'm going to, I'm releasing life to that area of your life from the hypothalamus, the pituitary coming down, down to the axis to your ovarian system. I release life to your thyroid and for all the endocrine system. Lord, I cause an alignment into the endocrine system right now. I release life, life, life right now. Anywhere that there is calcification, Lord, I cause the blood flow to, to just be normalized and to be restored back now in Jesus' name. In, oh, my, your TSH level, your your FSH levels, we are causing them to be normalized. Your follicular stimulating hormones, Lord, we command an alignment. I see an alignment of the axis in Jesus' name. And Lord, any area of the life that needs healing physically, I bring life right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I call it done right now in Jesus' name. I, I want I want Gina to just verify as you're yet flowing in that. Was that word a word? Was that accurate or or not? That is exactly like my thyroid. I, my thyroid hasn't worked at optimal level since like 2012. And I just had to go to the doctor a couple of days ago because of the uterine area and the excessive bleeding and the severe anemia and all of that stuff. And so he did not know this. I've never spoken to Dr. Moses. Uh, so that was all spirit. That was all God. That was completely on point, completely. Like I'm blown away that he immediately started speaking into my thyroid and into my female productive system mm -hmm. without even ever speaking to me. He did not know that. So yes, Praise God. God. And, okay, so I say in, in 90 days, in 90 days, uh, you should go get a blood work done again in 90 days, in 90 days, because I see an alignment. And it's, 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 I think the doctors are missing it. It's from the hypothalamus and the pituitary. That's where it is. They are missing it. So we speak life into that. I speak life into your pituitary glands and your yes. hypothalamus. And we command that secretion, the whole system to be aligned right now. In Jesus' name, I speak life right now. Complete restoration in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So in nine days, in nine days from now, just go get some blood work done. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory. And you've been you've been struggling with your weight. You're struggling with your weight and you're so worried about it. Lord, we it's an endocrine thing. Lord, we speak into that and cause an alignment in Jesus' mighty name, the name of Yeshua. We call it down in the name of Yeshua. Let it be so in the name of Yeshua. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yeah. So in 90 days, get some blood work done. In fact, specifically, go check your blood insulin level the same as your fasting glucose level. Your blood insulin and your fasting glucose, you've been diagnosed with insulin resistance. But I want to go check those, your blood insulin and your, your fasting glucose together. And we want to, I think it's going to, it's all going to be normalized in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm writing it down. 
Yes, your blood, you see a blood insulin level and then your uh, your fasting glucose glory to go in 90 days. In addition to the um, the thyroid, the, uh, the hormonal things, you're going to check those blood work. And Lord, I know the Lord has glorified himself in Jesus' name. Glory Hallelujah. To glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Patricia, I want to minister to you. I just want to release life into you, Patricia. I just want to release life, the life of God into you right now. The life of God. Just, I'm just, I just feel like releasing the life of God into you. And Father, I will release God's life, that life, Zoe, the life of God right now into you. Glory to God for restoration, restoration, complete restoration. I release life for complete restoration. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. I'm going to say the body. You're not going to die. You are living to declare the glory of God. I, I, yes, you are living to declare the glory of God. Yo mahashako shiki talahazo makutala bahoshete. Lord, the life of God right now, right now, right now into you. Thank you, Father, that the life of God is released in you. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible says that the same spirit that raised Yeshua from the dead lives in you. It quickens your mortal body. The same spirit is in you. And so we cause a quickening of oh. your mortal body by the spirit of the living God that is inside of you right now in the name of Yeshua. A quickening of the spirit at your atomic level, the level of your DNA. DNA in the name of Yeshua, releasing it now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Oh, Rama. Thank you. Sure Thank you. Thank you, um, Dr. Patrick, because I still, the, um, the tumor is still in my chest, but I had been asking God because I, I believe he's healed me. I mean, yes. I'm way beyond what I was before. Yes. And I know, I believe I'm not going to die. And no, I, you're not. I was in my spirit and I went to the hospital. Amen. But the only thing is this tumor that, you know, I asked God about that. I, I wanted to know, what you know, why is it still there? Why is this tumor hear, still here? I hear progressive healing. I hear progressive healing. Um, that's what the word that comes to me right now, progressive healing. So, Lord, we speak to the tumor to shrink and to completely dissipate in the name of Yeshua right now. I, I heard progressive healing, like the man that Jesus healed with a mad and say, what do you see? I see men like trees as they go back in. And then so I can see now. That's what I see. That I see progressive healing. So, Father, we speak into the tumor and I command the tumor to vanish and to shrink now in the chest and any other place that a tumor is. Lord, we command it to shrink and die in Jesus' mighty name. But I command it to come out and to just shrink and be completely extinct in the name of Yeshua. And we thank you, Lord, and we call it done tonight in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua. Yeah, so I, I, I see that the progressive healing is what I, I heard, you know, when you started talking about it. So progressive healing. And, and I know that he, the Lord has healed you mm -hmm. and just yeah, everything is going to just fall in place. The Lord has healed you. The Lord has healed you because yeah. by his by his stripes, you were healed and cannot be otherwise. You were healed, cannot be otherwise. And we believe the report of the law. We don't believe the report of the doctors. My colleagues, they like to, you know, state facts, but facts are not truth, all right? Facts are not truth. The truth is that by the stripes, you were healed. The facts on the x-ray and CT scan, they are facts. We don't ignore them, but we know that the facts are not the truth. The truth is that by the stripes, you were healed and you have been healed and you were healed. So glory to God and just continue to just walk on that every day. And I know that tumor is dissipating from your chest. In Jesus name. Yeah. Glory to God. I glory agree to God. That. And that the time will come where you will just even, you, you go days and weeks without even thinking about it. Amen. You go days and weeks without even thinking about it. And Amen. then just suddenly you would think, and you won't even know when it went. You won't even know when it went, but that which was there will not be there. Okay, glory. Yes. Do we have a, a farmer on this platform, a farmer who is doing like commercial farming, a farmer on this platform, somebody who into farming and um, on this platform, someone who has been farming and I'm talking about, you know, large scale farming, um, just came to me, mm -hmm. large scale farming. 
any anyone on this platform with a large scale farming, not necessarily in the US, uh, could be outside the country, it could be um, in large scale farming. Okay. Um, is anyone large scale farming on this platform at all? Uh, doing farming on a large scale commercial yeah, type. Farming, yeah, commercial large scale okay. farming. You are desiring to do that. Okay. All right. I was seeing into farming. Um, basically, I was seeing that there's a big land that, you know, that's a lot of crops, a lot of thing, mechanization on it, a lot of mechanics on it. And um, and I was I just seeing that it's just something that is going to prosper. I just see that it's going to prosper a lot. I just see that anybody who has been into that, then just the Lord wants you to know that it's going to prosper. It's going to prosper. Um, so the, the government won't be able to stop it. It's going to, in fact, you're going to get grants from the government mm -hmm. uh, that otherwise it's impossible. You're going to get grants from it. If I see specifically in a third world country, that's specifically what I'm seeing, a third world country, there's somebody in that type of business that um, the Lord's going to give grants to the person that is otherwise impossible in those mm -hmm. places. Um, it's mostly like a third world country in the business, somebody in the business in that venture. But the Lord is saying that, you know, it's going to even get grants and it's going to actually work out well. So I don't know whether the person was on this platform before or not, but that's what I see. Um, praise so, uh, so praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You getting anything else? Um, no, I think I would just... Uh, I was say, was Pastor settled. Dorothy, yeah. you just also be uh, prepared in case God is giving you something too. And Pastor Allen is also on here. Go ahead, Patrick. No, I think, I think I'm, yeah, I don't, yeah, I think um, I'm done for night. I don't feel any motion in direction, so uh, they can take it away. Any other person on the platform that the Lord is speaking to, just take it away. I just want to open up everybody's mic and just... Uh, Somebody need to shout out and thank God for just the accuracy. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank, thank you, God. God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank, thank you, God. 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 Thank you, you know, if you are going through one of those uh, situations that when he was like praying for uh, for for Gina, if you were, you know, just because he was praying and releasing that for her is is for her, but it's also for you, too. You can claim that for yourself. If you're connected with someone or close to that's going through some of those things, you can claim that for them. All you have to do is ask <laughs> Lady Rhodes. <laughs> Uh, the Lord gave a word of knowledge regarding a guy that wasn't even on the platform that we didn't even know. And uh, she claimed it for him and he received a miracle. So you can, uh, you know, claim this for yourself also, as well as for others that may be going through something similar. Hey, uh, Pastor Dorothy, do you have any uh, thing tonight? Where are you? Let me find you here. Pastor Dorothy, are, are you feeling, are you? Okay, you can unmute yourself. Man, I'm actually I'm jumping up and down because it's just out of the mouth of two or three that God confirms his word. And it's just a, a honor to be on here with the prophet and with Dr. Moses because I when God was saying this year we should speak life, and he's saying, by your own mouth and by your own words will you create and establish prosperity for yourself. Mm. So it's like we, if you haven't spoken before, this you need to purpose, be intentional about speaking and speaking to the earth because mm. I have just been introduced to this book and I'm probably late to the party because that happens. Then it's the book is called I Speak to the Earth by uh, Dr. Francis Miles and I'll put it in the, in the chat. But that's the book that I'm reading. And then the prophet comes and talk about the grand shrine that has this anchor in three signs that are earth signs. <laughs> and when uh, Dr. Uh, when uh, uh, Doctor Miles is praying, he says, earth, earth, earth. Mm -hmm. So it's time. And then um, uh, Dr. Moses is speaking to his mother, to her body, which mm. is earth, because God scooped us out of the dust of the earth and to Gina's body. So 
it's just like it said that God confirms his word out of the mouth of two or three. He will confirm his word. But the when uh, Dr. Miles is talking, he's coming from Genesis 1 and 11 when he's saying speak to the earth, this cosmos. And he was saying that the earth was was put, God made the earth especially for us to take dominion and be fruitful and multiply. But when Adam and Eve gave way to the devil and let him usurp them and take it over, doesn't mean that he gets to permanently keep it. When you wake up and find out who you are and take yeah. that dominion back and start to speak, you can speak to the earth. So I, I'm going to put that in the chat so that you can read, you can uh, read, start reading that book. And with uh, Patricia, because I saw that as uh, Dr. Pat Moses was speaking to that earth, I saw that tumor like dissipating, like going and going. So I just confirmed that because I saw all of that when he was speaking. And if you're like, if we tend to think that everything is, uh, is a new age, which I don't have a problem with because we need to be in the new age. Mm -hmm. And we seem to think like speaking to the earth and, and speaking to trees and hugging trees as a problem. But Jesus spoke to the fig tree. He did. And Mark, when he came by and saw that that tree had no fruit and he was hungry, some of you have some trees in your life and that are not bearing fruit. And it's like you're hungry for a relationship. You're hungry for some things to change, but you're just letting those trees hang around. And he said, and what did he say in Mark when he says, it says in Mark uh, 21, 18 through 22, he says early in the morning as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. How many of you in the trees in your life, you've gone like every day, just going around that mountain and they still haven't borne any fruit and you're still just feeding them and giving them whatever they need, whatever they can wrangle from you. Then he said, may you never bear fruit again. Mm -hmm. Immediately the tree withered. <laughs> so we need to tell some of those trees to get some gone. It's like, okay, you need to be gone. You need to be out of my life, out of my out of my sight, because you just use enough resources that I need for the kingdom. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly? They said, because he spoke to it. It had yes. when he took dominion, Dang. it had to do what he said. He said, How do you know? that a tree responds. And how do you know that a tree is alive? Because it responded. When he said die, it died. So it's just some trees in your life that God is just, you just need to speak to and tell them to move out of the way. If they aren't moving, you need to move. That's what the Lord is saying. But in this year, we are speaking to the earth. This body that you are in, this earth, this land that you are walking on. And when you read this book and you start to pray some of those prayers, you're going to be amazed at how things are going to begin to change in your life. So the Lord was saying, because in Genesis 1, I think it's 1 and 11, and it says, what is the earth supposed to do? It's supposed to bring fruit forth. And it's supposed to bear fruit. And it's supposed to be something that's going to enhance your life, not always drain you and take away from you. So the Lord just gave me this, to, this little prayer to write. He says, say to the earth, 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 you will always bear fruit for me and never curse me again. <laughs> Spiritually, physically, financially, in abundance that I may sow into every kingdom project that will enhance my purpose. Mm, mm, mm. So I'm going to say that again. You say to the earth, 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 you will always bear fruit for me and never curse me again, spiritually, physically, or financially, in abundance, that I may sow into every kingdom project that will enhance my purpose. So you're going to get up every day and start to speak to that earth. And he tells you, go out there and get some dirt. Hey, 
I'm about to dig up a flower bed out there. I'm getting me some dirt every day and speaking <laughs> to it. It's like, you're going to bring forth. And this is like, you're not going to, I'm not going to be cursed again. Because he said, God said that the heavens are his, but he says that the earth, in earth, he's given to the children of men. Mm. So the children of men don't just mean those that he blessed, that acknowledge that he's the he's the savior and he came into the life, but the, he reigns on the just and the unjust. So people out there that aren't even blessed by God, the ones that you're calling new age are speaking to the earth every day and prospering. They're the ones that are sponsoring all of the projects and things like that. And we are here saying, oh, you don't talk to dirt. It's, she is alive. The earth is alive. That tree yes. was alive. And yes. it will respond if you speak to it. Mm -hmm. So it's you that is that will speak to your, your um, he says, by your mouth, you will create and establish. By your own words, you will create and establish prosperity and health and all of that to your life for your life you will you won't always have to call prophet john i will call and i will send him messages and calls and ask him to pray for me and uh to confirm some things but i don't expect him to do it all amen i know i'm asking him to confirm some things because god is speaking into my life and i am speaking some things so you can call somebody else to speak into your life, but who knows you better than you? Mm -hmm. Who knows the report that the doctor gave you better than you? Who knows that relationship and how many times you've given that person a chance over and over again better than you? It's time for you to speak to those unproductive trees in your life, the Lord is saying. Those trees that are producing... What did God, what did the blind man say when Jesus spit on the ground and he put that clay in his, and he put it on his eyes? He said, I see men that look like trees. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he was, he was seeing into a, another dimension and he was seeing men that look like trees, but God said, okay, I'm going to give you some clarity. So he he, he cleared that thing up. But he had to pass through that dimension before he could get to what really God wanted to establish, the healing that he wanted to establish to him. Some of you are stuck and some of us are stuck in the ceiling stage. He called those things that, um, what did it say? That he will call those things that are not as though they were. Were means that they are mature. Some of us are asking for a season. Oh, God, will you pay this bill for me? Hey, I want all of my debts demolished and I want some money in the bank. So uh, stop asking God for a seed when really you want it to be matured when you get it. I feel God on that one. Amen. So where the prophet is tonight, where Dr. Moses was, well, I, like I said, I'm jumping up and down because God just really out of the mouth of two or three confirms his word. I said, okay, I don't mind being the cleanup woman, even though I may not be last, but that's kind of what I do. But I will put in the chat, it's called, I speak, uh, I speak to the earth mm -hmm. by, um, and it will release prosperity now. And it will release health now. So I'm in the process of uh, reading the book. I've been listening to it since I heard it. I've been listening mm -hmm. to it on YouTube. Just like I listen to Prophet John, I'm listening to this guy on YouTube and seeing all of what they, they say. Because once God uh, gives you a revelation, mm -hmm. information is good. You get that information. But what you want to happen is God to give you revelation about the information. Amen. You just get an information without revelation. Is it doing you any good? Amen. So what you want is for God to give you revelation about the information. And like the prophet said, we're getting plenty of it. But do you have revelation about the information that you're getting? The only way you're going to get revelation about the information that you're getting is by the word, by going to that book and getting the word and putting some word on it.
when I, when God gave me that revelation about the earth and he gave, then he sent me to the New Testament about the fig tree. You know what they say in our country. Then he put some spank on that stuff, on that word. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm moving in it. I am flowing in it. Praise God. So if you, I, I, if you get the recording for tonight, I hope you'll be blessed. But if you were here and you're sitting under this word and this anointing and you want to sow into it, it's no way that what you're asking God for and what you have been, what's been delayed and what's been held up won't come forth and break forth in your life. Right now, I don't care if you only sow a nickel or a dime or a penny like the widow that only had a penny. You know, find one somewhere. You can find one for Starbucks. <laughs> or you can, we can find one for a new pair of shoes. I said people put more in shoes and Starbucks than they will in their soul. Mm -hmm. Than the posture in their souls. But you, you want to put a little bit of Stank on that prayer you've been praying. Speak to the earth. Speak. speak to Start the earth. to speak. It's no way Man. that you are going to prosper in this new year if you do not speak and you do and you start to speak some positive thing. Stop praying, uh, Lord have mercy that I I am so poor and I can't. I'm never going to do this and I'm never going to do that. Repent for all of that and start to speak some positive things into your life. Speak to that earth, this earth, that this body, the earth that you're standing on. Go out there and dig up some dirt and tell it that you're going to bring forth for me and you're going to bring forth prosperity. You can no longer curse me. Say this, what you're holding inside of you. Amen. The, every, things that have come that have been created have been created by things that were produced in the earth. What the prophet is talking about, all the metals and all of those chemical things, those things were produced, came out of the earth. So there are some things that's in the earth that's waiting for you to call it out. But if you don't call it out, it's not going to come forth. It's going to bring forth whatever you need if you recognize that it's your voice that the earth is waiting to hear. That's right. It's okay, you can, you can hear the prophet's voice, but it's your body, it's your ground, it's your finances, you, it's waiting to hear your voice. So Amen. I am ju just saying, Amen. speak to it. If you haven't been speaking, you not to, need to start speaking. If you've just been writing, that's good. That's great. Write the vision, make it plain, but speak it and make it plainer. That's right. Amen. 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 Thank so you, Pastor. That's, <laughs> I'm excited, y'all. <laughs> see, That's great. Amen. Amen. For those Praise who the Lord. earlier, uh, the heavens are this grand trine is in the earth signs, the three earth signs, earth, 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 you know, and that's what is taking place. And uh, one, one, pat, one other thing before I get to Norma, you know, the scripture says that that scripture in Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, in Mark that you quoted, you know, what's so interesting about that, you were talking about speaking to the earth and speaking to trees, speaking to things, you know, they actually speak to us and Jesus was answering something that the tree said. <laughs> Yes, I recognize uh, that. that. Jesus answered mm -hmm. the fig tree. What? So, yeah. <laughs> so the earth is talking to you all the time. You have to be able to hear it and then speak back to it. So something wasn't right there that that fig tree was saying. So you said, you're not going to bear fruit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I was thinking, Prophet, when I read that and he said he answered and mm -hmm. he cursed that tree. I said, he probably... Asked the tree, uh, you know, said, why don't you have any food? You know, mm -hmm. why aren't you feeding me? And the tree probably started making excuses. Well, you know, mm -hmm. I was sick last week and you know, I didn't have any money. You know, I didn't have this. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't enough sunshine. It wasn't that's enough. That's right. And so Jesus said, okay, that that's enough. You, if you can't get bear fruit when I needed it, you won't bear fruit anymore. Amen. Okay, uh, Pat, uh, Sister Norma, you can unmute yourself, and we're going to soon be moving on. Hello, everyone. Oh, 
It looks funny on there. But anyways, God bless everyone. Nice to hear everyone and see you. Um, really quick, I just want to, when Pastor Dorothy was talking about speaking to the trees, I just want to say, like, I must have been probably like a couple months ago. I went out uh, to my backyard. I had planted a big tree. It was, I think it was early, no, in the summer of 2020. And that big tree, we would water it, and it just died. It died. It just filled up, and there was no life in it. And Reuben, I said, Reuben, that tree is dead. He's like, yes, I'm going to go out there soon and, you know, just uproot it. He never did. And one time, it just started blooming, and it came back to life. Mm -hmm. It was after we had all this rain. But... So ever since then, so now we're in 2023, and, and it's pretty tall. It's taller than I am. So then I love figs, and I buy them, and they're so expensive. So I'm like, I have a fig tree. So one day, something rose in me, and I went out there, and I told the tree, I said, listen here. I said, you better start giving me some fruit, because if you don't, you're leaving. I'm taking you out. <laughs> That's good. And Ruben's like, what are you doing? He's like, and Angelica's like, mom, that's not nice. I said, what's going on? No figs? So guess what? Yes. It's giving me figs every day. Every single day. I go out there and I'm like, oh, I didn't see this one. And it's like a mission of fig. It's black. I love those. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say that little story. But I surely did. I went out there and I told that tree, I said, listen, you better start giving me or else you're just going to be gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. You're sharing that. Powerful. I see. Yeah, you see prophesying because that's what should happen to some trees that's in our life. It's like, look, you if you don't start giving some fruit, you got to hit the road. Kick some rocks. Amen. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's good. That's a good word right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, God bless everyone. Thank you, Norma. Tell everybody hello for Thank me. Thank you. I sure will. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Um, Prophet John, can I say a word to uh, I think it's Noel. Yes. Yeah. Because I, um, the word I keep getting is for that person is a driving force. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's like um, this person has been standing, but God is going to give them strength to stand taller and to re reunite with some things and some people, some things that it gets kind of like uh, gone by the wayside. The mm -hmm. Lord is saying that you kind of like lay to the wayside, but God is saying that this is going to be the year that you're going to pick those things up and speak to those things, and you're going to start to see uh, life come, uh, come to them. And I'm also seeing more space, like um, a, a bigger house or something to do to work on a project or to move into um, some things that you've kind of been putting on hold. It's some things the Lord says that have put you on hold. And there's some things that you have put on hold that he's like, he's uh, giving life to again. And he is um, actually rejuvenating again. And it, and this, he's saying that he is uh, renewing your youth. And he's saying that he's renewing your strength. And it's like um, with some things, I feel like some things like have been mental, more mental that God is saying that he's clear and it's going to be clear, clarity and you're going to be like just more intentional and it's also, that is also for someone that you are connected with. Okay. If you are at your camera, you can open your mic, uh, Pastor Noel. Oh, he's a pastor. Yeah. He's a pastor in the Philippines. He may not be at his. Okay. Now. Okay. Yeah, but it's for him, for Pastor Noel, it is a resurrection time. Yes, I believe it. Things, so wow. many 
Things have, yeah, so many things have been put on hold and, you know, so many disappointments and disappointment from people who have made promises. But um, I see the Lord is replacing some of those people and he's also restoring. He's going to regain some things that he thought was lost forever. But now it's the season that God is saying that he's bringing those things back, or, back around again. Amen. And he's going to see, he's going to prosper from them. He's going to see some prosperity now where some things have lain, lain, been dormant and, and haven't been able to grow. And now that we're in this earth season, it's like, and he starts to speak to that earth, it's going to have to bear fruit for him. Amen. Amen. I see Pastor is grooming himself. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Good to see you, Pastor. Good to see you too, sir. Amen. You're Thank here. you for that word. All right. He received okay. it. All righty. Well, bless you. All right. I see Fabian's uh, hand was up, and uh, we'll go with that. And it is getting a little bit late. I think you're, yeah. Fabian, you can unmute yourself. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh huh. Okay, I was writing some things down from some of the things that you guys were saying, like the, the naked stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because in California, they passed a law, Governor Newsom, where they can't shake down the prostitutes and they're everywhere, literally naked. What? Yeah, I see them like every day. Like they're, they walk around naked, seriously. So mm -hmm. then a, a couple of days ago, one of my guys at work called us because this guy was uh, trespassing. He went across the street and literally went nude, like naked. Mm -hmm. So it's it's common thing what you, what's being declared. Mm -hmm. And then I, I one more thing that I saw, I was looking at one of my cards and it says that I have uh, rewards for the year, $20.63. So I was listening when you were giving the, the astrological reading. And you're talking about 21 degrees. Mm. And then it's an equilateral triangle, mm -hmm. which is 60 degrees each way, right? 60. Mm -hmm. And then three with the three sides and the three fold and the, the three earths. And I'm, I'm just hearing mm -hmm. the three over mm -hmm. and over the teaching that the Lord comes in threes. The feast comes in threes. Hasha, ba, ba, ji. Who da, 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 sha, just yes. three. And stuff. So it's just um just the synchronicity. I was just Amen. in attention. Yeah. Awesome. It's got the degrees of the sun and the moon was 21 degrees, seven times three. That's great. Thank you, baby. All right. Uh, I see. Um, you <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Um, I invited a friend on tonight. His name is Corey Burgess. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to see if we could all stand in prayer with him. Uh, he's going through a very intense divorce um he's got court tomorrow uh the ex-wife is trying to use um baited footage to keep his kids from him and um so there's been some shady things going on and um he's lost his house uh he doesn't uh he's currently homeless because of this and his job um he's had some issues with his job and I know you guys don't know him, but he is a man of God. He he does attend a church here in Houston, um, but he is in need of our prayer uh, for this situation because it's very stressful on his life, and he's got a lot of little ones that are in limbo behind this this whole messy divorce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, the word of the Lord came through. Uh... Dr. Patrick regarding a legal case. And I'm just gonna just agree and stand on that word. Been through something very similar, uh, Brother Corey. And so I totally understand uh, that whole process. And so we just pray right now. And I don't know if Patrick is still here. I can't see if he wants to just uh, pray also into this. But we just speak right now into this now in the name of Jesus Christ. And even as the word of the Lord has gone forth regarding a legal case, 
we just speak that you would move in this on Corey's behalf and that the truth would be manifested in the name of Jesus. We strike down every lie. We strike down everything that's been exaggerated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we just command that the truth would prevail. And we speak restoration over, over Corey spiritually, emotionally, financially, and in every direction. And in any way that the enemy has come in to try to destroy and to hinder your plan and purpose for his life. We thank you that it stops now. And we turn the tide. We turn things around. We take the authority back in this situation. He takes his power back in this situation to stand with the whole armor of God on as a man of God, as a man of faith, standing in his space against all the wiles of the enemy, against everything that will come forth through the legal system. And we pray that every lie would be exposed and we take the power from it in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's so, and it can't be otherwise. Hallelujah. It's so, and it can't be. If somebody else want to pray into that or uh, have something to say uh, regarding that, just you can do that. And we're going to quickly, quickly just move on. Uh, in that, okay, I see uh, uh, Fabian, and then we're going to go on to Vaughn after. You can unmute yourself, Fabian. Amen. I, I, I just right up my alley. Yeah. I God, Father, I just, pray, I just pray for this man, Lord God. I pray for, for his mental health, Father. I pray for his heart. I pray for the heartaches, Lord God. I pray for the knots in his stomach. I pray for his physical. Pray. I pray that he has rest, Father, every night, Father, that, that the Praise and the fears, Lord God, are rebuked in Jesus' name. I pray for his healing, Father. I pray for his psyche, Father. I pray, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that he doesn't fall out of character, Lord God. And yes. if he happens to, Lord God, that you bring him back, Lord God, that you remove all those, Lord God, that are meant to take him away from the path, Lord God, that you just expose the lies, Lord God, that the judge sees and humbles, Lord God, the opposing party, humbles, Lord God, the light. Humbles, Lord God, who shaba baba shit, the other attorneys, Lord God. I even see myself, Lord God, that we have the power. I seen the judge say that you have the power, and that I pray that he speaks forth, Lord God, the authority, the God given authority, hasha baba shit, against the lies, against this uh, resistance, against the opposition, against this agenda, this anti. Anti, uh, uh, anti family, Lord God. Anti marriage, Lord God. I even pray for a reformation, Lord God, against the courts. A reformation, Lord God, against the laws, Lord God. That they make it illegal, Father, to to be an adulterer, Lord God. That they make it illegal, Lord God. That there's penalties, Father, for infidelity, Lord God. That 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 the world, just like they made life for murderers, Lord God, lifers, that they make heavy penalties, Lord God, so that things shall change in the land, Father, that these agendas and these mentalities, Father, shall change in the land, Lord God, hallelujah. So I pray for this man, mental restoration, yeah. health, Lord God, that you bring forth the help that he needs, Lord God, mm -hmm. that you open his eyes and mind, Father, that you give him clarity, that you give him stability, Lord God, that you give him, Father, equilibrium as the heavens declare, Lord God. I declare upon all the men of God, Lord God, that are going to the, all the women of God. Equilibrium. 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 And I speak to his earth and his earth, his earth, restoration, restoration and healing and wholesomeness. Mind, spirit, body, physical, soul, and spirit. And let it be uh, even upon the children, Lord God, of the generations, Lord God. Stability, Lord God. 